So uh, what I'm going to talk about here is a prediction about the future, but it's a safe bet because I believe it's going to happen for sure. It's inevitable, uh, in part because the analytics exists and in part because the data exists. The future is not going to be like Tom Cruise in Minority Report where he's losing the gloves and looking for stuff. It's going to be, and you, you see this today, you're going to see more and more of this. You're going to see systems where the data finds the data and the things that are relevant find you. Uh, an example is going to be you're going to be driving somewhere and your phone's going to send you an, an ad, and the ad, it's not even an ad, but the suggestion's going to say, don't go that way, go this way. It's like, what are you talking about? And it turns out there's a big accident, and it's routing you around it. And, and so in this regard, you know, you're going to get amazing ads tailored, tailored, so tailored for you, you're going to be like, I love you. It's not going to feel like spam. And at the same time this is happening, the ability <clears throat> of people with poor intentions are going to be able to send you messages so precise to you, you're going to open them. You're going to click on the links, you're going to open the PDFs and the pictures, and that's how you're going to get spearfished. How this happens is how context accumulates. It's how systems like this are going to work, is stitching together lots of puzzle pieces to get a better picture about you, and it's going to be done in real time. Now, when I say context, this is an overloaded term. Everyone uses it in their own ways. Let me tell you what I mean. Better understanding something by looking at the things around it. You see the word bat in a paragraph? You look at the words around it to know what kind of bat it is. You see a pair of kid shoes laying on a, some grass in front of a house? That's one context. You see a pair of kid's shoes attached to a kid laying in the street under the car, that is a different context. So this is information out of context. It's just a puzzle piece. You could use an infinite amount of compute, time, and energy, and how much sense can you make out of this? It's kind of like going to the puzzle box and grabbing a piece out that has flames on it and just yelling fire without first taking it to the puzzle to find out it's fire in a fireplace. When information's in context, it means you've been stitching together what you've been learning over time. And this piece fits right here. And if you know that this Billy is also a uh, net admin at Google, lives in San Jose, used to work at AOL, and is an acquaintance of Esther's. I mean, we're all acquaintances of Esther's in some way, but so is Billy. So the story about data finds data, it, it assembles like this. Here's somebody's about page on their blog. And here's some form data that they're in Barcelona right now. These are like just two pieces, two puzzle pieces. But how do they, how do they relate? But all you have are these two email addresses. Oops, my red line there on the top is, should be slid down. But anyway, it's Bill at Google and Skrilla34. There's no way to know that these two pieces of data are about the same person until this piece of data shows up that's got both email addresses. With the presence of this, you get this and you get this. And it's in this way that context forms, and more puzzle pieces, more prediction. And so here's how you fish this. Well, Esther's likely influential to this person, because Esther has 2,500 friends on Facebook, and Billy only has 103. We can see in open source they're not best of buddies. There's no recent communications. You're not likely to be communicating to them in a phishing event right in the middle of some other conversation. And they don't know the context or the way that each other maybe communicate and express themselves in emails. And with timely knowledge, you end up with timely material. Lives in San Jose, in Barcelona now. If you go to Google and you do Barcelona Traveler's Guide PDF, the very first one you find would be the one you would attach to this phishing bait. So here's this crafted email. It's to Bill from Esther. Billy, sorry, we don't connect more often. Busy, busy. Heard through mutual friends, you're in Barcelona. Here's my favorite thing about the area. PS, spam's killing me, hence the new email address. You get amazing click-through rates on ads, and you get amazing infections. So spear phishing in mass is not going to be about a picture about a person that's hand curated by a human. It's going to be whole populations. And it's humanless. Syst There's not enough humans, by the way. You can't outsource this to all of China. <clears throat> so you end up with automated, targeted searches, subscriptions, crawlers that are weaving these pieces together to get better prediction about individuals and not snapshots of the past, but what's happening right now. And the plausible targets are going to be people running your networks, the executives, and if not them, their staff, family, and friends, and let your imagination run wild. And there's hints for scripts. If you know about travel, you'll use one set of scripts. Hobbies, you might use these other scripts or interests. Maybe you'll come to learn their charitable causes. Metallica's a great band. I love them, and you'd have your own scripts for that, so they could find people like me. Family members or others influential to them. So <clears throat> old school's GhostNet. GhostNet's the case where folks probably in China hand-selected somebody in the Dalai Lama organization and sent them something that was so tailored to them they opened it and it compromised the Dalai Lama's organization's 
uh, computers. That's one on one, that's old school. Next gen is lasers on foreheads from 7,000 miles, where it's one computer on millions of people. So what now? Well, I think, you know, can we educate people better not to open stuff? But I just think you won't be able to educate people fast enough. Maybe better malware detection, but the problem is there's all these windows, and the organizations that are doing real-time sense-making to improve prediction are always just going to be faster and play inside the windows. We saw that in Vegas. Every time we have a window that's a 24-hour window, bad guys just play in 23 hours. When we could get it down to a one-hour window, they would just play in 23 hours. Um, better phone home detection to see if the, the infection that you've received is sending messages out. I just think we're going to see better and better masking of that. And then really, are we going to see the investment we need for the resilience in black swans, like really bad catastrophic events where suddenly all the computers in a whole sector go dark? And I think this is going to happen so rare, we may not see the investment that's needed. Uh, closing thoughts, uh, as context accumulates, everyone gets smarter, both the ad engines and the bad guys, great ads, and you're going to get emails from people you recognize and trust, but it's not really going to be from them. So then what? Well, are we going to end up with identity authentication that's mandated? And then how are we going to square that with our right to, to uh, be anonymous? So spend some time thinking about that. There's some more uh, links about these things. Here's some links to GhostNet, and I've been blogging about some stuff related to this. And thank you very much. <laughs>